or has his whole life been one of illness? Y'all do me a favor, be careful. Uh, you may want to write this down. Here's a tweetable moment. Uh, never make an external indictment until you have conducted an internal investigation. I feel like preaching. Oh, y'all not feeling me. Be careful. I know, I know. So some of y'all watch me on TV and you see all these brothers in my church with, with jerseys and you see me preaching in Nike suits and you say, boy, that's the thug church. Oh yeah, I built my church on thugs. Uh, uh, give me somebody uh, who don't know nothing about church. Uh, I'd rather have a brother that came to get Jesus. I, I know he's been through some stuff. Y'all better talk to me, somebody. How you got all them people in your church? I heard uh, that some of them are drug addicts and some of them still sleeping with their man and some of them, you don't know what they've been through to be where they are and while you're looking at me like that with your legs crossed lean on somebody say there was a time they were still open can I get a witness here oh did I go there I'm sorry do me a favor touch everybody on your row and say you are at something go ahead everybody in this room has made some mistakes the text the, the, the text the, the text does not tell me what I need to know. The text, the text does not tell me how old he is. The text, the text just tells me he's been there 30, almost four decades. Are you my age? I'll be 45. If the Lord lets me see April 23rd, you millennials, I love you. I'll be back in a minute. But all of you that are my age are old enough to be my parents, old enough to know more than I know. Ten years on either side of me. Please tell me you're not in the same place. Yeah, that, that, that's okay, I don't care. Uh, it, it, it was Benjamin Mays who said, and I quote, uh, it's not failure, but low aim is sin. <laughs> not failure, but low aim is sin. In other words, I'm pushing the members of the Word Church to go get it. Let me hurry up and get it myself. Are y'all tired of me? Give me five minutes. I won't be long. Three things I'm asking our members to do if 2016 is to be the best year of their life. I'm in a teaching right now called Sweet 16, how 2016 can be the best year of your life. In 2016, you may want to write this down. Number one, I'm going to exercise wisdom. I'm going to exercise wisdom. Proverbs 4 verse 7 says wisdom is the principal thing. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 5 says we do not rely on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. Peep this. I don't even trust my own wisdom. I want the Holy Spirit to give me wisdom. Singles, come here. When a brother walk up to you, ask the Holy Spirit to give you a radar gun. The closer they get, something start beeping. If he walks up on you and he's not right, beep, beep. Oh my God, run, run, Forrest, run. Lord, give me wisdom. I'm married. If my wife says something that hurts my heart, give me the wisdom on how to respond back because my children don't need to see two ghetto people. Who's going to bless my children? Give me the wisdom because maybe I'm a single mother and Holy Spirit is telling me no matter how cute they are, this is not my year to have a man but to be a mama. I feel like I'm talking to somebody way back there. I'm just trying to figure it out. Lord, give me wisdom on which car to buy, if not to buy a car at all. Please catch this. There was purposeful segregation they had segregated themselves they were around people who looked just like them so the first thing we see everybody and I'm going to hurry up and bid you good afternoon the big bishop is coming tonight to preach for real tomorrow I got to get out of his way can I please suggest to you number one there was a divine destination everybody but secondly the text is clear there was a kind of purposeful segregation but then there was exegetical frustration now I understand as I keep reading it was only because God was setting up a sovereign situation because the text says that Jesus rose up on the brother I feel like preaching this and asked him a question do you wish now some of y'all miss that because let me tell you what a sovereign situation is a sovereign situation is a situation that is beyond your human ability to handle a sovereign situation is when God puts you in a position that nobody can get you out but him a sovereign situation is beyond your pedigree and your PhD a sovereign situation y'all missed that remember in John the ninth chapter uh, the brother was blind and the question was asked to Jesus who did sin 
This man or his parents that he was born blind, Jesus said, didn't nobody sin, neither this man or his parents. Peep this. Really, let me vernonize, modernize, and contemporize it. What Jesus was really saying is the only reason this brother was born blind is so I can give him his sight in front of y'all. Y'all just missed that. Okay, somebody missed your shout. Let's have a little church. Can I suggest to you, what if I told you that the stuff that you're going through is not even about you? It's for your cousin them. What if I told you the reason why you in it is so God can let your enemy see him bring you out of it? Can I? I wish. Oh, I wish I had 50 people that would jump up in this crowded space, slap your neighbor and say, it's a sovereign situation. Go ahead. No, that's the wrong neighbor. Find somebody that came to have church tonight and say, I had to go through that. Go ahead. Tell them God was teaching me. The scripture says I learned obedience through what I suffered. Is there anybody here that would thank God tonight that 2015 was rough, but now you know he was setting you up for something bigger. You caught hell last year, but slap five people and tell them not another year. Not another year. All right, they want me to make it do what I do. That's all right. Not another year. Please catch this, everybody. It was a sovereign uh, situation. But then there's something that theologically causes a conundrum. Because the text says Jesus asked him a question. Oh, didn't nobody catch that? Uh, uh, Jesus asked him a question. You're like, okay, and what's so deep about that? What's so deep about that is that sovereignty has no ambiguity. <laughs> if you know everything, why would you ask anything? So whenever God asks you a question, he's not seeking information. He's trying to drop revelation and push you to personal motivation. I'm preaching much better than you responded. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm teaching much better. Whenever God asks you a question, uh, Adam, where art thou? Uh, Abraham, where is Sarah? Uh, Moses, what do you have in your hand? Ezekiel, can these bones live? Saul, why does thou kick against the pricks? Whenever God asks you a question, He's not seeking information. He's trying to push you to motivation. What he's trying to do with this brother is move him to action. He's trying to stimulate his will. He's saying, you've been here too long. Do you wish to get well? Oh, I feel like preaching this. Do you, do, do, do you wish, God? Uh, uh, well, I do want to get well, but see, I'm raising these kids by myself because my baby's daddy, I ain't asking none of that. Do you wish? to get well I'm just another black man trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents I ain't actually for Tupac lyrics do you wish to get well this brother don't love me I'm out here trying to make do you wish when my daddy walked out on me and that's why I had to half raise my do you wish every brother I trusted broke my heart do you wish my church not growing because the members won't talk do you wish I feel like preaching up in here uh, do me a favor here's another tweetable moment push somebody and say never make excuses make adjustments go ahead Oh, I feel like preaching to somebody who caught hell this year. You ain't got time. Don't nobody feel sorry for you but your mama and your pastor. If you don't get up and get something done, you'll be stuck by yourself. Jesus said, I don't care what you've been through. I don't care how long you got here. So not only do, do I see exegetical frustration. Can y'all handle this? The next thing I see is unnecessary information. Because the text says, the brother answered and said, every time I try to get in there, what be happening? I, I was almost in last year, and this brother knew I was next, and he going to just jump in before me. Jesus said, I ain't asked you all that. I, I just asked you, do you wish to get well? That's too much information. I, I know you're in from your beginning. I know who you got here. I know your mama them. I know your cousin. I, I know the day it happened. I, I got the power. I want to preach to somebody who's been catching hell for the last 10 years. You always been behind the eight ball. Let me talk to somebody who goes to this pregnant church who does not have a degree or a whole bunch of money or nobody in your bed right now or your mother wasn't there your father didn't care uh, your wife uh, don't speak life your father didn't bother and your children come on your child is wild I got a word for you God said he can pick you up in every circumstances this is your year I feel like preaching 
so some of y'all missed that. I, I, I'm going to say it one more time. I'm just not trying to shout you. I'm trying to provoke you to action. This is your year. Okay, that side didn't hear me. I'm going over to this side. I don't know what you've been through. This is your year. Do you wish to get well? I don't care how bad it's been in your life. 2016, receive this by faith, is going to be for some of you the best year of your life. Woo! I dare somebody to receive it. If the last few years have been rough, praise them like it's already happening. Praise them. Don't wait till the battle's over. Start thanking God. Please catch this. I got to hit the clutch. Sit down. I'm almost finished. Do you wish to get well? Can I throw something at you that maybe many pastors in this room may have missed over the years? Because I thought I knew this text and I was looking at his response and I noticed because I was so baffled and bewildered, almost to the point of being pugnacious with the text because I could not believe his answer. The king of kings is asking you, do you wish to get well? There is opportunity in front of you. The, the Savior is beckoning you. He passed over everybody else and went to him. Uh, scholars have argued for years, why him? Many say maybe because he had been there the longest. M -m Many say it's because his condition was the most arduous. Uh, I, I don't know, why do you think he went to him, Pastor Vernon? Favor. I feel like preaching. Oh, I feel like preaching. I'm, I'm not going to try to figure out why I got picked. I'm not going to try to figure out why I got a cute girl that loved me. I'm not going to try to figure out why people keep joining my church. I used to beat myself up because I'm from the projects. I come from nothing. Mama didn't have nothing. She was 15 when she got pregnant. I used to have guilt trips. People calling me a pimp. That's a cult. I don't like that church. I used to drive myself crazy trying to figure out why God was blessing me. I'm apologizing, giving people too much, trying to make up for my guilt. Now what I went and did was bought me a 75 Chevy that's a drop top so I can have a wind blowing through my hair so I can't hear the haters talking about me. Can I get a witness here? Uh, touch your neighbor and say, this year I'm going to walk in my favor. Go ahead. Oh, that's the wrong person. Tell somebody, if God's getting ready to bless me, I'm going to treat people nice, but I'm going to praise them in advance. Some of y'all still sitting there, but I need about 5,000 people that will say, I'm not apologizing for what's getting ready to happen. Some good stuff is coming my way. Is there anybody here that believes you're next in line for a miracle? I know you caught hell the last five years, but slap seven people and tell them not another year. Oh, 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 I gotta get out of here. Let me, let, let me hurry. Uh, 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 I was trying to figure out, Bishop Owens, why, why would he respond with such buffoonery, Tasha? Jesus asked the man, do you wish to get well? He gives his ravaging resume. It was driving me nuts until I looked at the text and seen who answered. The text says, the sick man answered. I feel like preaching. Ten of y'all missed it, it'll hit you Tuesday. Uh, why would you expect a well response from a sick person? You want another tweetable moment? Why are you surprised when sick people throw up on you? I'm, 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 I'm learning patience as a pastor because all of my sons, and they're here tonight, and daughters across the country, my phone is, honestly, Lady Vernon and I have one phone. We don't have a phone for our pastors and a phone. We decided a couple years ago that we would treat our pastors like another campus. So. They're like our leaders. All of them can call our phone, any of them. Some of them have 10 members. Some of them are filling up stadiums. We treat them all with kindness and honor. And every one of them, the ones filling up stadiums, the ones that are barely seen, 100 people call me and say, Dad, uh, these people crazy sometimes. <laughs> I say, son, that's job security. <laughs> <laughs> it, 
if they ever all get well, <laughs> you'd be unnecessary. The sick man, I met with my leaders, and I'm, I'm nearly finished. I met with my leaders, not my ministry workers. Everybody that's in ministry is not a leader. Yeah, because you, yeah, stop calling everybody leaders because you finish 10 classes does not make you a leader. You just got out of prison. We can't let you be a leader yet. We go, just usher right now. Don't, don't call everybody in ministry leaders. There are ministry workers. You guys know I love to train pastors, so please forgive me. It bleeds out of me. Pastoring is what I do, so if I'm, if I'm bleeding, pastoral stuff is what I do. But I want you to catch this, and so I met with my leaders, and we're in a book now called uh, The Emotionally Healthy Leader by Scazzaro. Read everything, Scazzaro. And Scazzaro says that the Holy Spirit may be in your heart, but granddaddy's in your bones. You can be saved and sick. You can be spirit-filled, speaking in tongues, and don't speak to everybody else. Yeah, I keep telling everybody to speak in tongues. Can you speak to me? I see you speaking in tongues, but you didn't even speak to me. I, if, the, the, the sick man answered. The, the sick man answered. The, la Lady Vernon and I have committed ourselves to loving on the sick people. She has a degree, but she's sick. She has a master's degree, but she hasn't mastered men. She's sick. Yeah. And, and, the, and the issue is, it was Martin Lloyd who said, and I quote, Christianity is not just a matter of doing, but rather it is a matter of becoming. The problem in many churches is that we let people start doing before they become. And so what happens is, Mike, what, what happens is they're in 10 ministries. They're running around doing to hide the fact that they have not become. So they're on praise team, they're ushering, they're greeting, and nobody knows she's a secret porn addict. And she has a good heart. She's not going to hell. She's saved. She loves the Lord. But the sick man answered. <laughs> you, you, you'll be more patient with your wife if you understand that the sick man answered. You, you thought she was dogging. You don't know that's her mama talking. Yeah, you, you don't know the man before you jumped on her. You don't know. You, you don't know she's never seen marriage modeled. And so when you say something to her, she snap at you. You don't know that's the sick man answering. When your husband acts a certain way, I'm not pacifying sin. I'm just telling you, you'll love people better if you realize that most people in our churches are still sick. They, 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 they are walking around. You can't do anything in our church until you finish grief recovery, until you take healing the father's wounds, until you take six to eight classes. It's almost like a semester of college just to get in ministry. And somebody asked a question because I don't just want you for your gift, I want you whole. Ooh, y'all gotta catch this. <laughs> The, 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 the sick man answer, can I tell you, don't you look at me in that tone of voice because all of us, if we're not careful, the sick man will answer. Thank you, Bishop Jakes. He gave me the precious privilege of preaching at Megafest a few months ago, and I said to thousands of men, uh, you have to be careful because in all of us, uh, there is the public us, and then there is the private us. Y'all pray for me. I'm sorry, not you, but me. There is the public me. But then there is the private me. Uh, I'm so proud. If you don't mind, can I just stop here and publicly say to the public me that he has become everything that I wanted him to be? I guess I'm a rapper in my next life, Bishop Owens. Let me just pause here and say publicly to the public me that he has become everything that I wanted him to be. The public me has an earned doctorate degree. The public me comes on national TV weekly. The public me has never committed adultery. The public me is known for profound pastoral ministry. The public me is known as a man of integrity. He's not the problem. The problem is not with the public me. The problem is with the private me. If I could ever get the private me, to catch up with the public me, but there seems to be a dichotomy. I feel like preaching to somebody. 
Do me a favor, slap five people, say I'm two people, pray for me. Oh, Paul said, I know that in me that is in my flesh dwells no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform it I do not, for the good that I would not that I do, and that that I would not do I do. If I do that that I would not, it's no longer I that does it. Oh, what a wretch that I am, but thank God for Jesus. I feel like preaching up in here. Touch your neighbor and say, we may as well have church right quick. Would you do me a favor? Touch five people and say, God's been good to me. Go ahead. Uh, tell them there's a public me and a private me. When I make mistakes, he gives me another chance. When I fall, the blood of Jesus covers me. The devil's been trying to drive me crazy. I missed some stuff in 2012, 2013, 2014. But slap five people one more time and tell them not another year. <laughs> That's the wrong person stepping in the nearest aisle. Walk over to somebody and tell them, not another year. Watch this. Will I miss out on the magnanimous moment that is me? Not another year will I miss the pregnant possibilities of my future. Not another year will I let my haters keep me passively missing what's on my life. Not another year will I date another dummy. Not another year will I live in this same spot. Not another year. I feel like preaching in here. I got to let y'all alone. But can I suggest to you, Jesus told him, get up, pick up your pallet and walk. Some of y'all, God just sent me to D.C. to tell you to get up. Go ahead. I know you're tired of your neighbor. They're catching hell right now. They feel like throwing in the towel, but mug them and say, get up. Go ahead. Shake them and say, get up. Go ahead. Tell them, I know you got some credit issues, but get up. Go ahead. Tell them, I know it's been rough, but get up. Tell them, I know he walked out, but get up. Tell them, I know the church is not growing, but get up. I know there's some debt you got to cancel. But get up. The text says, Jesus said to the man, when Jesus, you do know Jesus, don't you? I got to get into my seat. You do know Jesus, don't you? Let me ask you one more time. You do know Jesus, don't you? J Jesus is everything from A to Z. I don't believe you know that. Uh, push somebody and ask them, do you know your ABCs? Go ahead. Uh, no, that, that's the wrong person. Tell somebody, do you know uh, your ABCs? Y'all looking at me funny. Uh, let's find out. A, he acquits. B, he builds. C, he changes. D, he delivers. E, he edifies. F, he feels. G, he guides. H, he heals. I, he inspires. J, he justifies. K, he gives knowledge. L, he loves. M, he ministers. N, he nurtures. O, he overcomes. P, he provides. Q, he quickens. R, he restores. F, he saves. T, he trains. U, he understands. W, he withholds. X, he x-rays. Y, he yields. And Z, he gives you zeal. Now I've said my A. Yes. Yes. Would you push somebody and say, neighbor, you've been stuck too long. You've been stagnant too long. But this is your year. If you're not too mean, step in the nearest aisle. Walk over to three people and say, neighbor, it's been a little rough. Neighbor, I struggled this year. But not another year. <gasps> can I get a witness? I said, can I get a witness? And good evening, First Baptist. I'm closing tonight. Is there anybody here that God's been good to you? If the Lord has been good to you, then shake your neighbor's hand. Say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but he made a way out of no way. Yes, he did. And good evening, Washington. I'm going back to Cleveland, but I want to close tonight by asking one question. Is there anybody here? Yeah. That he made a way out of no way. If the Lord picked you up and turned you around, don't stand there and be cute, but walk to somebody hug them real tight say you don't know like I know 
what the Lord has done for me. He picked me up, yes sir, and turned me around. Don't stand there and be cute. Let's go old school. Just one time, do me a favor. Somebody's had a rough year, but look them dead in the face. Say, oh, oh neighbor, I got something to tell you. Be not dismayed. Whatever betide, God will. Yeah. Take care of you. Don't just stand there, but jump up on your feet. Walk over to somebody. Say it's been a rough year, but this is a new season in my life. I'm going to another level. Oh yeah. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Can I get a witness here? Good night, y'all. I gotta go back to Cleveland, but just one more time, grab somebody by both of their hands and go to shaking them and say, neighbor, I got to shake you till you shake out of your conundrum. I got to shake you till you get yourself together. I got to shake you till your money gets better. I got to shake you till you find you a husband. I got to shake you till you come out of debt. Shake ya till you get the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If this is your year, don't wait till the battle's over. But shout like you believe it. Like something's changing. Shout. Like he's changing your life. Shout. Do me a favor. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to open up your mouth loud as you can and holler, not another yet. the way you did that what if I told you that whoever shouts the loudest God may stop by your house tonight this time I want you to run way back open up your mouth and shout shout wait 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 I promise I'm going to let you alone. I feel a shout brewing in here. Uh, but this time when I ask you to shout, uh, don't just shout for yourself. I mean this from my heart. Shout for your kids. Shout! Wait a minute. Uh, I don't know how y'all shout in D.C. Uh, in Cleveland, we pick them up, put them down, pick them up, uh, put them down. M maybe you don't know how to do the holy dance. Uh, so this time, I'm going to open up the, uh, the, the altar, and uh, the altar is a dance floor. And anybody that's been catching hell all of 2015, but you're going to dance your way into a new season. Uh, We're going to open up the dance floor. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Shh, let me look around. Look like most people here grew up in church. I love it. I love it. So uh, only six of y'all ever been to a club. Where my club is at? I'm sorry. Uh, do you remember when you was at the club? Uh, if you were standing on the wall and uh, ladies come here, did nobody ask you to dance? You would sit there and be patient. But if your favorite song came on and you was feeling pretty good, slap three people, say dance by yourself. One, two, 